Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to episode 9 of Java to Kotlin. In this episode, we're going to be talking about inheritance in Kotlin. Now, inheritance in Kotlin is not terribly different than inheritance in Java, um, but I definitely still think that it's worth uh, mentioning. So there's a couple of things that I definitely want to go over. And so to do this example, we're going to write a vehicle class, and then we're going to write a car class that will inherit from uh, the vehicle class. So first we'll go ahead and write a class called vehicle, and I'm going to zoom in here. And we're going to just give this uh, a max speed, and that's going to be uh, an int. And that's it. So that's going to be our vehicle class for now. Perhaps we'll, uh, perhaps we'll go back and change it. And then we're going to write a car class, and that's going to have a make and a model. And we want to have that inherit from the vehicle class, uh, which we're going to do in just a second. So essentially the idea is that vehicle is the super class and it defines the speed, and there can be all different kinds of vehicles. They could be land-based vehicles, air-based vehicles, water-based vehicles, so on and so forth. But all these vehicles have some sort of a max speed. And then in the case of a car, we want to inherit this max speed, but we also want to have uh, the make and the model. Right. So the first thing we need to do is that in Java, when you declare a class, you can automatically inherit from that class. Right. So if I were if you we were working in Java and I created this vehicle class, I could automatically um, just have the car class extend from vehicle. I would write class car extends vehicle in Java. So something like class car extends vehicle and so on and so forth. And I do all of that. Now, if I wanted to stop uh, vehicle from being extended, if I wanted to uh, basically say that car is not allowed to extend from vehicle, I would have to mark vehicle as final. So I'd have to say final class vehicle. So if I do this, if I mark vehicle as a final class, that means that it cannot be inherited from. And so in that case, this would not work and I would not be able to do that. So Kotlin sort of takes the opposite approach. It says that by default, you aren't allowed to inherit from a class. You have to specifically mark the class as inheritable or open, as we'll see in just a second, in order for you to be allowed to inherit from it. And so I'll quickly show you what the inheritance would look like, and then we'll just see this error and, and fix it. So in order to do this, we don't use the extends keyword like we do in Java. We use a colon, and then we put the other type. So I'm going to put vehicle right there. So instead of saying class car extends vehicle, we write class car colon vehicle. And you'll recognize the syntax from you know, Swift or uh, C Sharp or other languages. But what you'll notice um, is that vehicle says this type is final, so it cannot be inherited from, right? And so basically, again, Kotlin automatically makes all classes final unless you specify otherwise. And the way that you do that is you add the open keyword. And you'll notice that that turns orange because it is indeed a reserved word. And now you'll notice we do have a different issue, but the issue about the, the type being final um, goes away. So that's great. Now, the other thing that's different is that in Java, you would have, you know, a constructor and you would call the super constructor. So, you know, you'd have, you'd call super and you'd give whatever, you know, parameters you need to give there. Um, but here you actually call the super constructor. If the super class has a default constructor, you actually call that default constructor right here. Now, if there are secondary constructors in the vehicle class instead, then you could have secondary constructors in the car class that would call those constructors in the vehicle class in the same way using the super keyword, uh, exact same way as in Java. Um, but here, since vehicle has a default constructor that takes max speed, we need to call it directly. And so what we'll do is we'll actually take max speed as a parameter because different cars can have different max speeds. Um, and then we're going to, or actually we don't want to save that as a val, right? Because we're going to actually pass this to super constructor. So what you'll notice is that I added this, uh, this parameter called max speed, but I did not set it as a val, right? Because when I call vehicle and I pass the max speed up to the vehicle, it's going to save it right there. Um, you know, here's the val keyword, it's going to save it right there. So if I were to try to save it right here as a val, it's going to tell me that it hides this member of the super type. It says this has a max speed right here, and, you know, right here, 
I'm trying to hide it. And that's not what I want to do. There are cases where you do want to do that, and we'll look at that in just a second. Um, but we don't want to do it there, right? Um, and so we just take it as a parameter. And then here when we say vehicle, we say it inherits from vehicle, and we call the super constructor immediately when we define that it inherits. So we say it inherits from vehicle, and we're passing this max speed uh, value up just like that. Right, so now um, what we could do is we could make uh, an instance of car. So we're going to make an instance of car. Um, well, val car equals car. And we need to specify, of course, the max speed, the make, and the model. So the max speed, um, we'll say it's in miles per hour. Let's say it's 160 miles per hour. The make is going to be a Chevy, and the model is going to be a cruise. Good car. So now we have an instance of car here, and what you'll notice, um, and I guess we should put this inside of our main, just like that. Uh, then what you'll notice is that when we go to print car dot, you'll notice make, model, and max speed, all of these options show up just like that. Um, so even max speed, which is defined up in the superclass, is accessible. And there's absolutely no surprises there, um, because that's exactly how Java works. Now, the one other thing that is worth noting is uh, overriding functions, or I guess methods, I should say. And uh, it's very similar to the whole idea with classes. So for example, if I create a function called move, um, and I mean, this is sort of a, uh, a, an arbitrary example, but I'm going to say the you know, vehicle moves, right? And so what I can do is I can call car.move, just like that. And if I go ahead and run this, and we'll give it just a second, it will output the vehicle moves, right? So just like that. Um, but what if we want to override this so that it actually works differently for the car? We want to say like the car drives or something, or we could even be more specific and say the Chevy Cruze drives, something like that. So we can define the, we can override it just like that, fun move, and we'll print this time, we'll say the make model drives. And that's supposed to be in double quotes. So it'll say, in this example, the Chevy Cruze drives, for example. Um, but what you'll notice is that we get an error, and it tells us that move hides this member in the supertype uh, called move, right? And so in Java, you don't need to, uh, you can automatically override something just by matching the signature, right? So this is a function called move that takes no parameters and doesn't return anything. So if we write a function called move, or a method I should say called move, that takes no parameters and returns nothing, it would automatically override. But Kotlin wants to be extra careful, and so it requires you to add the override keyword. So in Java, you could add the, you know, at override annotation, just like that, um, which we don't want to do in Kotlin. And that's optional in Java, but in Kotlin, it's required that you use this override keyword in front of the function. And the other thing that you're going to notice is that we get another error that says that move in vehicle is final, right? Because just like classes are final by default, so too are functions. And so we need to declare this function as open in order for it to be allowed to be overridden. So one last thing that's uh, worth mentioning is that we sort of have this inheritance set up here so that uh, this move function or move method rather is open in vehicle and then we override it in car. So if we wanted to allow for a subclass of car, let's say we wanted to make minivan be a subclass of car, or sedan be a subclass of car. This is hypothetical, but if we wanted to, we would have to annotate car as open, first of all. Um, but then this move method is automatically going to be open, right? Because it's open in vehicle, right? And so it's overridden in car, but it's still open. So if I were to create a sedan class that inherits from car, I would be able to override the move method. If I want to stop that, I can use the final modifier, just like in Java. Right? So once I make this, this uh, method open in the superclass, it will be open for all subclasses, no matter how far down the tree, but you can stop that at a certain point by using the final modifier. So it's open, uh, vehicle has the move method open, 
so it's allowed to be overridden in car, but since I mark it as final inside of car, any subclass of car will not be allowed to override the move method. But we don't want to do that, so I'm just going to get rid of open, and I'm going to get rid of the final right there. Two more really quick things to mention. Uh, it might make more sense in this example to make the vehicle class be abstract. And so to do this, um, you can just simply use the abstract function like that, or the, sorry, the abstract modifier like that. And abstract classes are automatically assumed to be open, which makes sense because you wouldn't make an abstract class if you didn't want to allow it to be inherited from. And you'll notice that if I write open, it will tell me that it's redundant because abstract is already present. Abstract classes are already open, so we don't need to mark it as open. Now this move function is, uh, is implemented here. Uh, and so if I wanted to make this abstract, then I would just simply write abstract fun move. And it's going to give me the error because it has a body and I just get rid of the body like that. And once again, if I tried to mark this as open, it would say it's redundant because abstract is present or abstract. And since this function is abstract, it's automatically open. Uh, but note that I still do need to use the override keyword or else I will get that error right there. So I do still need to use the override keyword. Nothing else changes at all. I can just mark the class as abstract and abstract classes are automatically open. Abstract members, abstract uh, methods are automatically open. Uh, but if you're not making the class abstract, then you would need to mark it and, uh, and its functions or its methods as open in order to be able to override or inherit in subclasses. And the last thing um, that I'll mention really quick has to do with just interfaces. So imagine, you know, if I made an interface um, and, you know, I don't really have a very good example, but I'm going to call it A. And all you do when you want to inherit from an interface is you include it in this list after the colon, right? So I'm saying car inherits from vehicle and it inherits from this interface, which I just called A. And so essentially, uh, you know, in Java, you would have extends class implements and then the list of all the interfaces, but there's no distinction like that in Kotlin. You just put after the colon the class and, you know, whatever interfaces you inherit from. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that because we don't have a use for it in this project. So that's all for this video. We just took a look at classes, which are a little bit different uh, in Kotlin, just a couple of, a little bit of different syntax and a little bit of a different methodology as far as overriding and final and open and all of that stuff. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn, and if you enjoyed this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.